Imagine your mind as a giant laboratory. Every time you learn something new, you're building a mental experience. And the deeper that experience goes, the stronger it becomes. What separates a genius from an ordinary person isn't the size of the brain. It's the quality of construction. Pay close attention to me now, because what you're about to hear could forever change the way you learn. The secret to training your mind like a genius isn't about stuffing it with information. It's about building knowledge with structure, purpose, and full awareness. Think of a simple cube. Inside it lies an idea, a formula, a concept, a memory. You can put it together quickly using tape and thin paper, but it'll break the first time it's tested. Or you can weld each side carefully, creating a firm, almost indestructible structure. That's what a genius's mind does. It doesn't rush, it refines. Most people learn in a hurry, trying to finish before they understand. They read, repeat, memorize, forget. But here's the secret. The brain isn't a vault of words, it's a living organism of thoughts, and every thought needs to connect to another. Memory isn't a gift, it's the side effect of well-crafted thinking. You remember best what you've actually thought about, what made you reason, make mistakes, compare, and doubt. And that's why, if you want to train your mind like a genius, you need to relearn how to think. Learn slowly, think deeply, build with intention. But now, listen carefully because here's a truth that almost nobody talks about. Most of what you learn, you forget. A week after studying something new, half of it disappears from memory. And that's not because you're stupid, distracted, or lazy. It's because your brain was designed to forget whatever it doesn't see as important. But there's a secret. The mind doesn't forget what is revisited with purpose. That's the first principle of a genius mind, the spacing effect. Every time you revisit an idea, your brain strengthens it, like a muscle being trained. The first time you learn it, the knowledge is fragile. The second time it resists. The third time, it starts becoming part of you. But here's what almost nobody understands. Repetition alone isn't enough. The difference between an average mind and a trained one lies in how it repeats. You can reread a text 10 times and stay the same. Or you can ask yourself once, what does this really mean? And never forget it again. That's why geniuses don't study longer. They study smarter. They turn every repetition into a new experiment. They don't review, they rediscover. Each time they revisit an idea, they try to see it from a new angle, a new context, a new question. And with every new review, the curve of forgetting flattens until it almost disappears. That's how knowledge becomes solid, enduring, and impossible to erase. Here's the key. You don't need to learn more. You need to review better. The secret is to spread your learning over time in small doses at different moments. The brain needs that space to reorganize its connections, like letting cement dry before adding another brick. A genius understands something most people ignore. To remember is not to repeat, it's to rebuild. And with each reconstruction, the brain creates new pathways until knowing becomes natural, automatic, almost intuitive. Now. Imagine if I told you there's a second principle that makes the brain learn with less effort and retain knowledge for decades. This is where real mental training begins. Pay attention to me now, because here's what almost nobody has told you about learning. You don't learn when you listen. You learn when you create. It's what we call the generation effect. The human brain wasn't built to store information like a hard drive. It was built to create it. And every time you create something out of what you've learned, something deep inside you changes. Imagine you're putting together a puzzle. If someone hands it to you already done, you look at the picture, understand it, and forget it. But if you build it yourself, piece by piece, your brain records every attempt, every mistake, every guess. You didn't learn the image, you built it inside your mind. And that's what makes it part of who you are. That's why geniuses aren't people with better memories. They're people who participate more in their own thinking. They don't repeat words, they manufacture meaning. When they read something, they stop and ask, what does this really mean? How would I explain it to someone else? And at that very moment, the brain lights up. Thousands of new connections form. And what was once just information becomes living knowledge. If you want to train your mind like a genius, stop consuming passively. Rewrite ideas in your own words. Explain them out loud. Ask questions that make you uncomfortable. Create strange analogies. Imagine the concept in a completely different context. The more mental effort your brain makes to arrive at an answer, the stronger that knowledge becomes. Learning is like lifting weights. The more cognitive strain, the stronger your memory muscle grows. 
And that's where most people fail. They want to learn fast, without friction, without thought. But learning without effort is learning that slips away. Now, imagine something fascinating. If you applied this principle, creating instead of repeating, with just one small change every day, your brain would start to transform. And that's where the next secret comes in. How to test what you truly know. Not to pass a test, but to discover whether your mind is getting stronger or just more confident. Now imagine this simple scene. You study, you understand, you think you know. And then someone asks a question, and suddenly, what felt solid collapses. That's the moment your brain reveals the truth. You didn't really learn, you only recognized the content. And that's why the third principle of a genius mind is the testing effect. Geniuses never trust the feeling of, I know. They test what they know. Not to get grades, but to see if the knowledge survives outside their heads. When you try to recall something without looking at your notes, the brain switches into survival mode. It searches through your connections, rebuilds the paths, and tries to access the information through different routes. It's in that process, the struggle, that memory becomes stronger. Not when you read, but when you reach. Learning is like walking in the dark. The more times you try to find the path, the more familiar it becomes. That's why recalling is more powerful than reviewing. Reviewing is looking at the map. Recalling is walking the territory. The greatest thinkers do this constantly. They don't memorize formulas. They challenge themselves with questions. What if I change this? What if I explain it differently? What if I got it all wrong? Those questions are the hammers that forge understanding. You want to know if you've truly learned something? Try to explain it without looking. If you get stuck, perfect. That's your brain showing you where the foundation is weak. Mistakes aren't signs of stupidity. They're signs of reconstruction. Every failure is an adjustment point a chance to reorganize your mind. When you learn this way, knowledge stops being a loose memory. It becomes a network of living ideas. And the more connections you build, the harder it becomes to ever forget. Now, imagine if you could combine all these principles, reviewing with purpose, creating to understand, and testing to solidify, into a single way of thinking. The result would be a mind that doesn't just learn, but thinks on a higher level. And that's exactly what comes next. Pay close attention, because what I'm about to tell you is the turning point between ordinary learning and extraordinary thinking. The fourth principle of a genius mind is higher order thinking, the kind of reasoning that transforms facts into wisdom. Most people learn in a straight line. They see something, grasp the basics, repeat it, move on. But great thinkers, the true geniuses, don't stop there. They ask, how does this connect to everything else? They link ideas. They see patterns. Imagine knowledge as a vast map. Every concept you learn is a single point. If you learn dozens of disconnected things, you'll just have dots scattered in the void. But when you start connecting them, something magical happens. Meaning emerges. And meaning is what creates real memory. That's why when you truly understand an idea, it doesn't stay trapped in one context. It spreads. It blends with other ideas. It builds mental bridges that no one else can see. That's how creative thought is born. A genius doesn't memorize answers. They build mental models. And when a new problem appears, they don't panic. They ask, what structure can I apply here? They don't search for a memory. They search for a relationship. Here's the secret. The more connections you build, the easier your brain thinks. Learning at this level is like building a city of ideas where every street leads to another and every intersection reveals something new. The problem is that most people live in small villages while geniuses build mental metropolises. Now imagine what would happen if you combined all of this. Spacing that strengthens, creation that deepens, testing that corrects, and thinking that expands. That's the map of genius. But before you assume it's talent, here's the truth. It's conscious practice. And any mind can learn to do this, even yours. From here on, you'll learn how to apply all of this in your daily life and literally train your brain to think like a genius. Imagine you now have all the pieces. Review, create, test, and connect. But the real power lies in putting them together into a living system of learning, one that grows with you. When you apply all four principles, spacing, generation, testing, and higher order thinking, 
something incredible happens. The brain stops being a warehouse and becomes an organizer of ideas. You begin to think like a scientist, curious, questioning, patient, and deeply active in your own process of learning. Look, every time you review an idea, you strengthen the foundation. When you create from it, you build new layers. When you test yourself, you find cracks and fix them. And when you connect one idea to another, you raise mental bridges that make it impossible to get lost. You don't need to be born with talent. You just need to learn how to think actively. A genius mind isn't satisfied with knowing. It wants to understand why and how. It turns every question into fuel. And the most fascinating part is that the more you practice this cycle, the less effort it takes. Learning becomes enjoyable, almost automatic. The brain starts making connections on its own, and suddenly understanding new things feels natural. But there's one last step, the element that turns this whole system into something alive and unforgettable. It's the principle that separates the student from the master, the curious from the wise. And it starts with one simple question. How could I teach what I've learned in a way that even a child would understand? Now imagine this. You've just learned something new. You understood it, took notes, reviewed, tested yourself, but there's still one question that defines whether the learning is truly yours or just borrowed. Could you explain it simply? That's the real test of genius. It's not about sounding smart or using complex words. It's about making the difficult obvious. This is the Feynman method. He believed that if you can't explain a concept simply, you don't understand it well enough. And that changes everything. When you teach, the brain organizes the chaos. It must decide what's essential, what comes first, what connects to what. In that process, you begin to see gaps, inconsistencies, holes you never noticed before. And when you fill those gaps with new insights, knowledge transforms into wisdom. That's why teaching is the highest form of learning. When you try to put your understanding into words, the brain becomes sharper, clearer, more conscious. And memory, once fragile, now anchors itself in meaning. There's no more memorizing. There's living understanding. So if you want to train your mind like a genius, do this. Explain what you've learned, even if it's to no one. Talk out loud, draw it, record yourself, write short explanations, because the act of explaining is the act of thinking out loud. And thinking out loud builds the architecture of a brilliant mind. The secret isn't knowing everything. It's learning to think about what you know. Geniuses don't have bigger memories. They have better mental models. They see connections where others see confusion. They see the invisible because they've trained their eyes to notice it. And now you know how to do the same. Learn slowly, create, test, connect, teach. That's the cycle that transforms an ordinary mind into an extraordinary one. Like this video if it helped you see learning in a new way. And tell me in the comments, if you could ask Richard Feynman one question about learning, what would it be? Subscribe to the channel to keep training your mind. One video a week can literally rewire your brain.